activate. This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Now, back to our storyline in, in, in John 18. These Jewish believers, these Jewish religious leaders, had ambiguously answered Pilate, and they said, look, just trust us, he's, he's a criminal. And Pilate sees these guys for the snakes that they are, and he answers them this way. Fine, you're so sure he's a criminal? Handle the matter yourselves. Now, what he was saying was, look, you have your laws. Roman government has given you permission to have your own laws. And you can handle these matters on your own. He's saying to them, kind of sarcastically, look, if you've already tried the matter and you're not willing to give me the specifics of your accusations, then you don't need me, just handle it without me. And then that forced them to admit the real reason that they were there. They wanted Jesus executed, and they didn't have the authority to do it themselves, so they wanted Pilate to do it for them. Now, the death sentence had to come from Rome. It couldn't come from the Jews themselves. Remember how Jesus, three years earlier, had talked about being lifted up? He used that term, if I be lifted up, he was referring to Moses lifting the serpent up in the wilderness. It's in John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. As Moses lifted up the serpent, serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. What Jesus was talking about, he was giving them this word picture of crucifixion. He was saying the, the Son of Man, that's the Messiah, the Chosen One, that's the reference Son of Man refers to Old Testament prophecy referring to the Messiah, the Son of Man, what, he would, what would happen to him. And so Jesus was referring to himself as the Son of Man, meaning that he was the Messiah. And he was saying the Messiah is going to have to be lifted up. He's going to have to be crucified. And the Jews, uh, 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 the Jews really struggled with this because they wanted a death. A sentence of death meant crucifixion. That was the Roman way of death. That was the way they, they put people to death was crucifixion. The Jews were not allowed, watch what I'm saying now, they were not allowed, see the quotation marks? They were not allowed to put anybody to death. And yet, they did stone people to death. The Jews would do that, they would say, oh, that person, she's an adulterer, so they would stone them to death. Oh, this person just violated this, you know, the temple and so forth, they came into the temple, they, they stoned them to death. They had their religious rules, but they weren't really allowed to put anybody to death. And when they would stone somebody to death, Rome didn't like that tradition, uh, by the way, but they, they allowed it, and they just kind of looked the other way. Kind of looked at them and said, boy, if you're dumb enough to kill yourselves off, they go right ahead. That was kind of the way that Rome looked at it. So the Jews didn't have the legal authority to put anybody to death. But they did it a lot. They would stone people to death. They didn't crucify them, but they would stone them to death. And what Pilate is taunting them with right here is saying, look, why don't you do it yourself? You know, you do it all the time. Why don't you just go and put them to death yourselves? You know, what he was saying was, you stone people to death all the time. Why don't you just do that? And you will remember, looking back on the life of Christ, there were times when they actually did pick up stones like they were going to stone Jesus. And he just walked right through the middle of them. So they could have done that, and Rome would have just kind of looked the other way. But they wanted something more. The Jewish religious leaders didn't want to settle the matter that way. They wanted Rome to put Jesus to death. John 18, 31 says, look, take of yourself, judge it by your own law. That's what Pilate said. The Jews said, it's not lawful for us to put anyone to death. So they admitted that when they stoned people to death, they were wrong. <laughs> they were doing something wrong. They wanted Rome to do this. Why? Why would they want Rome to do this? Because there were so many followers of Jesus that they feared a rebellion within their own ranks. And this way they could absolve themselves of the deed and say, well, you know, Jesus, uh, they, uh, you know, and tell Jesus' followers that, that Jesus was put to death by Rome. You know, that was their decision. So Pilate is rather disgusted right now with these Jewish leaders. And he goes back inside to question Jesus a little bit more. John 18, 33 says he goes back in and he calls for Jesus and he says, Look, are you the king of the Jews? Now, that brings a very, very important question. Who is Jesus? 
Who is he at this point? He's obviously not the king of the Jews because they didn't accept him that way. And yet, they're saying that he says that he's the king of the Jews. And they're implying that because he's the king of the Jews, he's causing insurrection. And if he's causing insurrection, then Rome needs to get involved because uh, this guy could cause a lot of political trouble. And yet there's not one incident where Jesus did anything like that. Because that's not the way he handled himself. So why did, why did Pilate ask Jesus this question, are you the king of the Jews? We're given a little more insight as to what happened in that exchange between Pilate and the religious leaders uh, in the Gospel of Luke. It's Luke 23, verse 2. Here it is. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Now, remember, all of these things that they had come up with before in the three religious trials, never once did they mention this. They had decided that the reason they were bringing him, that they were accusing him, was blasphemy. Now, they're coming up with all of these other trumped up charges. Now, notice they didn't say what they had found him guilty of in the religious court. They never said, well, he's guilty of blasphemy. That was what they had decided he was guilty of. They never said that. They never brought that up. They weren't about to bring up something as the primary charge because the Romans would have just rolled their eyes at him and sent them on their way saying, blasphemy? That's not a reason for putting anybody to death. So now they have to make up things. Now they have to come up with some different charges. So they trumped up this charge that Jesus was spreading rebellion against Rome. The accusation had two elements to it. One, that Jesus claimed to be a king. And secondly, that as a king, he was telling people to not pay their taxes to Caesar. That's what they were saying. They were saying, look, you got a problem on your hands. This guy claims to be a king and he's telling people to not pay taxes. Which was Pilate's primary responsibility, by the way. As a procurator, procurator there, that was his job, to collect taxes. Which is another reason why nobody liked it. And uh, it was, it was, so that would have got, that would have got his ear. In reality, Jesus had done just the opposite of that. He, uh, when the Pharisees had tried to trick Jesus into saying something similar to that, what did Jesus do? It's in Matthew 22, verse 21. Jesus responded to him. He found a little coin and he said, look, therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. That's what Jesus said. Pilate's question to Jesus, then, are you the king of the Jews, was based on, are you really doing this? Are you, are, are you the king of the Jews? Are you fomenting rebellion in, around here? Because Pilate would know if there was some sort of rebellion going on. And he's saying, I, I don't know really know anything about this. Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus' answer was not what Pilate expected. Jesus asked him a question. Instead of saying, yeah, I am, or no, I'm not, Jesus says, hey, is that your own idea? Or did somebody tell you that? It's an interesting question because what it says is, where did you come up with that? In other words, consider the source. Consider the source. And I see in Jesus' response really a probing of Pilate's conscience. A calling to think this through for himself. Are you just parroting what others have said or are you sincerely asking the question? Pilate is perturbed and he answers very curtly and rudely. You think I'm a Jew? It was your people and your chief priests who have handed you over to me. Pilate was clearly not happy with the spot he was in. Nor did he care who Jesus was. It didn't matter to him. Pilate wants to get to the bottom of this and get it over with as quickly as possible. And he says, look, what have you done? Tell me what you did to get your own ruler so mad at you. What he was saying was, let's figure this out. Let's settle this right now. Let's settle it once and for all. What he was doing was giving Jesus a way out. And Jesus ignores the question. <laughs> this is amazing to me. Now, he could have just said, well, I'm not what those guys say I am. I never did this. This is what I did. Bum, 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 and it's over with. But Jesus ignores the question, and he said he goes, instead he goes right to the heart of the matter, and he answers, 
My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting. They would have been here defending me. They would have been up in arms against the Jews themselves for arresting me. But my kingdom is of this world. And what was he saying? He was saying, yeah, I'm a king. But not a king of something in this world. Something bigger. Something greater. Jesus makes it very clear that he is a king and he has a kingdom. And he clarifies something that should have been very, very clear to Pilate. If he were a king and had a kingdom on earth, wouldn't his kingdom have gone to arms to protect him? On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.